uh, today. 20 minutes to 3 o'clock, 712 And in a broader world, folks, I'm just looking around the internet here, still many of the global headlines focusing on Brisbane, the once-in-a-generation floods there that have engulfed the Queensland capital and the subsequent loss so far of 12,000 family homes, 12,000 family homes and some 3,000 businesses and counting. Well, Harry and Rose Macklin left Ireland back in 75 for a new life in Australia. For their son Paul, a professional diver, getting away from the floods this uh, past couple of days was a close enough call. Just but the day before the floods, I was driving up for a job interview up to uh, Brisbane for a job up on the two-week dive job on the bar- Barrier Reef. I saw the, the gentleman I was meeting, he was in the south of Brisbane, and I thought I'll go and st- see him, and then I'll stay the night over at my sister's, which is north of Brisbane, and the next morning my sister ran in from work and said, you better get down to Cool and Gatta where I drove from, because they're going to put Brisbane into a uh, Queensland into a state of emergency, so I got in the car and just bolted in the car back, and um, and that was it. And I just made it through the floods just in time. Uh, they're talking about an inland tsunami. The way the fresh water came down the valley toward Brisbane. You spent a lifetime in the water professionally. Uh, is that overstating the case? They're talking about it like a, a dry land tsunami. I think what happened is because of the floods in '74, like the population wasn't as bad, but. What the situation in Brisbane was like, as you know, like the floods at the dam, the Wyvernhoe Dam, they, it was at 190% capacity. And when the, they had to release the water out of that at the same time, at the same time it was flooding. So when one of the meander, and say if you can picture a big river meandering, when it bursts at the sides, like if it t- takes a right or a left turn, all that water will force off the side of the river and it will cause like a yeah like a tsunami condition unbelievable paul what about your family then in brisbane are they concerned people are talking about this almost like carefree aussie attitude oh well it's just mother nature is that is that the mood that your sister describes her house is fine in redcliffe which is north of brisbane and um she, but she actually had to put a lot of staff that worked up and down the coast up, so she had like a hotel condition at her house. So a lot of her work colleagues stayed there for the night and, you know, they were kind of phoning friends. All the phone lines went down too, you know, it was a bit of chaos and no one knew who was where or what was, you know, what was going on. And I think today that, you know, that everyone was in a little bit of shock up everywhere because you can't know supplies are getting through and whatnot, but it, things are calming down a bit now. In terms of then the national response of your government on the state of Queensland in particular, has that been adequate in your view? Oh, it's, I think it's been terrific. I mean, no one prepares for this, do they? I mean, you know, if you can think of the worst case scenario for a major city in Australia, I think this would kind of top the, be top of the pops, wouldn't it? And um, so I think they've treated it really well. The, one of the major... Uh, kind of compliments I'd say which you've been hearing a lot from the government is uh, how Gillard has been they've, and Anne Blythe from Queensland she's been giving everyone a step by step account every two hours and so people know where they stand so of course in situations like this you get a lot of rumours like there's rumours of dams breaking and, and you know they were saying just what you hear every two hours are the facts of, and what you hear you know is basically just rumours so people have been kept up to date which is pretty good. Still not over yet. I mean, the worst was probably last night, but we're still getting cyclone conditions coming from the north, you know, so it's looking like a very, you know, with this, this, the, the conditions this year, it's looking like we're going to get a lot more storms too. And, Paul, just finally, they're talking about a rebuilding on sort of a post-war scale. Do you foresee an entirely new Brisbane once it's all over and dealt with? Well, I think, well, when, like, Brisbane in 1974, when they had the last flood, was, I guess was, it was a whole different Brisbane than what it's like today. Um, the infrastructure's a lot better, people are set up, um, the houses are stronger. It's, it's actually a good set-up city, but it's still in a flood area. I mean, the banks of the river can still, with excess rain, they can still burst any time, but... I think as far as a better city, uh, I really don't know what they do. They just have to have a more backup, probably backup plans, but I, I really can't tell you. It's just such a catastrophic event, isn't it? Like, I mean, how can you plan for that? How can you create 
extra infrastructure, better buildings when the, the whole of Brisbane's like so much underwater. It's sh- shocking. Paul Macklin there in the late Australian evening, speaking to me just before we came on air, air today. Paul, no stranger to these shores. Uh, Paul Macklin, seven one two double six five double two, a quarter to three on the button. Uh, the worst I've ever saw, Mark, in terms of uh, inattentive driving. Was